Oh, this isn't pretty. Illustrated book episodes. Some game events play out as illustrated book episodes. Decisions you make during these episodes can have a dramatic, drastic impact on the development of the game's plot. As with dialogues, you will often need to make very skill checks during these episodes. Depending on the circumstances, sometimes you will need to choose one of your party members to perform an action, and sometimes. Hmm. Excuse me, sorry. And sometimes an action will be automatically performed by the character with the highest skill bonus. Okay. And so our adventure started, earlier and much more tragic than we'd expected. The whole team who'd gathered in the hall yesterday had been, re had been reduced to but a handful of brave souls, led by Orin, and not at all by that scoundrel Tartuccio, no matter what he might have imagined of himself. Jamandi Aldori was waiting for us, but to get to her, we'd have to march through fire. Literally, as we approached the burning building, we... Uh, so... Don't sure cells look like it's water. Uh, yeah, this is the best option. It was a good thing we hadn't wasted any time. After we entered the building and taking just a few steps forward, the wall behind us slanted and crashed down with a terrible crackling sound, blocking the way back. While we may not have planned on going back, if we'd come in a little later, the flaming logs and red-hot bricks would have fallen right on our heads. Regardless, we were left with only one way to go. The hot air burned our lungs and our eyes watered from the smoke, but Orin led us stubbornly through the flames, while Tartuccio did nothing useful at all. We made it to the hallway leading to the banquet hall when we heard someone calling for us. It was Valerie, one of the guards I'd chatted with a bit in the banquet hall. Even then, in that calm setting, I'd been stunned by her beauty. But now, amid the smoke and flames, she looked like a celestial avenger, an armored deity, menacing but beautiful and merciful, descending from the higher spheres to help us poor mortals. She had a burned, barely living guard in her arms. There are two more, she shouted as she passed by us. They're wounded. Help me pull them out. Or did she mumble something about how Jamali was waiting for us? Meanwhile, Oren rushed to save the guards from the fire. Ugh, I didn't have good athletics. Succeeded, though. Excellent. <clears throat> Saving the poor fellows didn't take long. Together we lifted them up and carried them away from the fire. Only then, then did Valerie pause to get her breath and wipe the sweat from her face. Thank you. That was truly noble of you, she said. And now let us rush to Lady Aldori's aid. Ensuring the guards we'd rescue were relatively safe, we made our way to the, to the hall where the battle was already in full sw swing. Experience points! Okay, so it's going to take us past that. But all that was like just in that room. Okay, uh, one of them is fatigued. Oh dear. Uh, Valerie is encumbered. Oh my god, Valerie is a party member, okay? You are encumbered. So we should get some stuff off of you. Or at it. Oh my. Okay. Uh. I don't know what I'm doing, so I'm just going to exit out of this, because it's not going to be any fun for you to figure out what the heck I'm doing. That is not far. Oh. Yes, I missed a couple of assassins. Meh. That doesn't help me right now because I'm not in charge of the kingdom yet. Um, what in the world? Reinforcements are already on the way. Say your prayers, scum. <laughs> Okay, so how what Okay. So, I am yours to command. So you're a fighter, right? Probably. Let me see. Uh tower shield specialist. Okay. So we're gonna wanna put her I am your shield. Let us strike as one. <sighs> Hide 
me from their sight. What you got there? Uh, looks like you can switch between your weapon sets on the fly. Okay. What we got here? Channel positive energy. Nice. Touch of chaos. There's a lot to unpack here. Actually, we're gonna want, uh... Thank you. It's a lot more complicated than Dragon Age. <laughs> That's the RPG I've been playing for quite a while. I haven't played a CRPG in some time. I know what to do. They dare to attack me! Assassin Leader, Rift Channeler. This is a lot. Instead, you, sir, let's move you over this way. Burning hands. Oh, no, it's not as far as I thought. Get up. Oh, wait, no. She's undead. I shouldn't have done that. What the heck? Time? Thank you for your valor and bravery. The enemy was strong, but you were stronger. And that means I made the right choice. Just as I thought, there were worthy leaders among you. I'm especially grateful to them for the courage and common sense they showed while defending the mansion. But this attack means we have even less time than I thought. Someone already knows of our plans and is acting against us. You'll begin your expedition immediately. Lady Aldori, please, I know who arranged this attack. The vile king of Pitax, Iroveti. What's more, I know who among us works for him. 
Hey, you! Show everyone the ring you're wearing. You think I wouldn't recognize Hirovetti's seal? That's why he wasn't killed. The bandits recognized him as one of their own by this signet ring. Well, I think I know what to do here. <clears throat> I have no connections to Patax, but Patartugio's name, accent, and clothes seem like he came straight from there, which almost looks more like they might be Irovetti's spy. Probably, yes. But this evidence is circumstantial at best. There's definitely a spy among us. But who? All I have is one word against another. I'm afraid you're both under suspicion. I bet my life despise anyone but this man. I saw how he dealt with those creeps with my own eyes. A true warrior, I'd go with him through hell and high water. This purple crook on the other hand... <laughs> he's got the eyes of a spy! And the mug of a spy! Lady Eldori, don't listen to this thick-headed barbarian. She doesn't know what she's talking about. During the attack, our leader showed his true colors. He forced us to break into the armory and rob it. Forgive me for my trespass. In my defense, we were in the middle of a battle and in dire need of weapons. Considering the circumstances, that was more than reasonable. Whew. That was a sound decision. Sometimes one must act at one's own risk and peril until crossing the boundaries of what is allowed. Showing initiative is no crime. It is insane when faced with death to stop and question whether you may be breaking some law or rule. Even more insane would be to ask forgiveness for making the right decision. Sorry, but your words display a lack of wisdom. What about that trick he pulled right before we came in here? He knew very well you were fighting the enemy, but instead of rushing to help you, he dallied as long as he could, dropping everything to save people from the fire, even though the guards were handling things just fine. He was obviously hoping to show up too late and find you already dead. People were dying right in front of me. How could I just walk by? Really, Tartuccio? You're seriously trying to blame someone for saving people from a fire? May Shellen spare me from ever having to make such a choice, but he behaved decently as a true leader. A true leader is someone who has their priorities straight, not someone who would put a valuable ally's life in danger for the sake of some servant. Enough squabbling. I'm still not sure which of you I can trust. However, the risk of entrusting the whole affair to a spy is too great. Here's what we'll do. Two teams will head out. That way, I'll know at least one group can be counted on to serve my interests in the Stolen Lands. Lady Aldori, most of those who were to set off for the Stolen Lands have been killed. Those who yet live will require help. Please allow me to join the expedition. I'm sad to lose such a talented warrior. But you're right, Valerie. They have greater need of you right now. Go, and may Abadar keep you. Which of the two teams would you prefer to accompany? If my leader allows, I would join his team. He seems a worthy commander in my eyes. Commanders, military leaders, all these laws and rules are but dust and vanity. I suppose I will accompany Tortuccio. Aw, oh, him. Our leader is good in battle, but I don't like all the spiritual agonizing. I prefer those who can act without wasting time helping every little pipsqueak. Those like Tartuccio. Ugh, Tartuccio's going to take the credit for himself and be done with it. Shellen, spare me from such allies. I'm going with you. You're a hero worthy of my quill. I don't even need to think. I'm coming with this man. As for you, Purple Toad, just wait until we meet along the way. I'll be sure to hang your rotten spy guts from the trees. All right, we have two teams. To avoid unnecessary conflict on the road, you'll each take a different route to the Stolen Lands. Tartuccio's team will go through Navactas Crossing. The Garrison Commandant will provide him all the help he needs. You will take your team to Oleg Leviton's trading post. He's been complaining about the Staglord's bandits for a while now. 
There, you'll be provided with all the necessary travel supplies. Cool. Sign scroll of Ray's dead. I'd like to believe you, but I know all too well how convincing traitors and spies can be. If you're truly innocent, I hope you can forgive me this precaution. While you're away, Keston will investigate the night's events and learn who in Restov is working for Patox. But you should know that it isn't just Patox we need to worry about. The royal house of Sertova may also interfere in our plans. Oops. I've managed to keep this affair a secret from them so far, but that can't last long. By my estimations, you have no more than three months. After that, any feats you accomplish will be pointless. The royal house of Sertova. It's nice that you can mouse over these things. House Sertova, the current ruling family of Bravoy, is also the oldest Brevik noble family and the most influential. Their original holdings are the environs of Port Ice in northern Isia, on the shores of the Lake of Mists and Veils. Very complicated names here. The Sertovas are known as careful and cunning diplomats. Before Choral, I hope that I'm pronouncing that right, Choral the Conqueror invaded, the Sertovas were known as pirates and raiders. The family still has many connections with the pirates and brigands of the region, many of whom are distant relations of their clan. <sighs> Sorry. <sighs> their family motto is, ours is the right. And now, farewell. This battle was but the first ordeal along your path, and you overcame it as true champions of Restal. May the obstacles that follow also fall to your feet. Fear nothing, my friends, and return victorious. Well, that all happened. Surviving a terrible night, our small team set off to brave our fate. Beware, stolen lands. Heroes are on the way. Okay, I think that'll be the end of this recording. But I am so excited about this game. Uh, look at this, I don't even know, like, oh, this big map, and oh, I'm j oh so excited. So, anyway... Uh, thank you for joining me on this, what I'm sure is a long episode. Oh yes, very long, it seems. Um, I'll probably cut this in two. Uh, but um, yeah, uh, we'll see what fate has in store for Orin and his little adventuring company. Uh, Alright, well, uh, thank you for joining me again. And um, until next time, goodbye.